Welcome to Nevertheless Podcast with Bidemi Makmodi, a show dedicated to organic leaders and leaderpreneurs. Today, you would learn how to discover your essence and live more powerfully. Hello, you are welcome to another edition of Nevertheless, a show for organic leaders and leaderpreneur. I'm sure you've been looking forward to this next um, episode and this one would blow your mind. Today, um, I'm not alone. Uh, like you know, um, we have Pastor Bidemi Makmodi. You all know her as BMM. She's here today to just share amazing insights on this conversation we're having um, this episode. Of course, the conversation is on rehab. And um, a lot of conversation around brokenness. You know, there are a lot of things happening in the environment today. And I know you have questions in your mind, you know, which you have been looking for answers for. Well, you're in the right place. Those answers are here today. I have today with me this morning, BMM. Good morning, Ma. It's good to have you all the time. <laughs> Hello, Victor. He forgot to tell you his name. Imagine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Victor Ogungbe. And I'm so excited about Pastor B that I forgot my name, but again, Pastor B, good to have you, man. Thank you. Hello, Victor. Um, thank you for joining me on this journey. This month, like he said, the series is titled Rehab, and we want to have conversations around rehabilitations, brokenness, and the things that bring us to the place where a man or woman requires rehabilitation. Now, when we talk about rehabilitation, I don't want you to be focused on addictions and stuff like that. We'll sure. talk about those, sure. but you don't necessarily have to be addicted to substance to be requiring rehabilitation. Sure. So to explain that, what I'm trying to say is that rehab is about a lack of wholeness. Mm. Anyone who's lacking in wholeness mm. requires to be rehabilitated. True. True. I, I mean, I, I like the fact that you know, Pastor B went on to clarify that it's not just about, you know, um, maybe the negative aspect. You know, when people hear rehab, the first thing comes to mind is, oh, ah, this person has gone a while kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And so most times people find it difficult to come back, mm -hmm. you know, and say, okay, let me even, you know, nip this in the board and address it. Yes. And Pastor B will be doing justice to that. So I think I should ask, Ma, so what do you think brokenness is about? Because I, I think this whole thing is really about brokenness. Yes, because like I said, I said that a, a person requiring rehab or rehabilitation is someone who is lacking in wholeness. Mm -hmm. The thing that brings a person to a place of a lack of wholeness is brokenness. Wow. Now, brokenness is a state of strong emotional pain mm. that stops a person from or prevents a person from living a healthy life. Wow. A healthy, normal, or whole life. Wow. So when we think about brokenness, you know, we're talking about things that might have happened to people, states in which people find themselves, themselves. and they know within themselves, mm -hmm. or others can tell as well, that they are not whole. Mm. That something has gone wrong. Mm. Something has been truncated or impacted by something that, or some episode in this person's life. And so the person is not in a place of wholeness. This can be mental. This can be whole, emotional. Mm. And sometimes it's even physical. Wow. But the point is that because wholeness has been taken out, mm. then there is a fracture somewhere. Mm. And that's why men are requiring rehabilitation. So brokenness is a state of strong emotional pain that stops someone from living a normal, healthy, and whole life. Wow. I mean, so a, a few things come out to me. Mm. It, it tells me that um, when people are broken, mm. there's there's an optimum mm -hmm. that, that perhaps God expects of them. Yes. There's where they ought to be, mm -hmm. but they are not. Mm -hmm. So brokenness is like maybe a taking away, a reduction yes. of... Of who you are. Yes, that's what it is. That's wow. What it is. That means that they perhaps people now need to be able to acknowledge, mm. uh, you know, what this whole thing is about. Yes, yes. We're, we're going to get to acknowledgement. But before we get to acknowledgement, brokenness is there are different kinds of brokenness. Mm. And we need to know that because all unless you know that there are different kinds of brokenness, you may misconstrue what kind of brokenness for the other. I see. So, for example, mm. there are three types of brokenness for our purposes in this series. Mm. We'll be looking at these three types. There is brokenness that I call innate brokenness. That is the brokenness that speaks to the fact that nobody is perfect. Mm. 
Mm. So even though we're talking about wholeness and the state in which God has created man and woman, mm. that we are not perfect. True. God did not create anyone perfect. True. So innate brokenness is what I call brokenness by design. When you take a look at it or you try to understand it, this from the point of psychology, there are many arguments and I won't go into that. Okay. But yes, I won't go into that. Mm. What I want to say is that innate brokenness is how God keeps a part of us mm. in himself so that we can keep coming to him. I see. Do you see it? Makes sense. So uh, innate brokenness does not need rehabilitation. It just needs for a man to recognize who his source is and consistently go, go back. back to that source. Amazing. Do you understand that? Yeah. So God, innate brokenness says God kept a part of me with him. with him. If you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, I believe it will be verse 11. It mm. says God put eternity in the heart of man. Absolutely. Therefore man cannot tell what is about to happen. Mm. I'm paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. So in that place, it means that there is a state that a man will be, no matter how spiritual, no matter how powerful, no matter mm -hmm. how together mm -hmm. he is, mm -hmm. there is still something that drives man back, back to God. Mm -hmm. For me, that is innate brokenness. Amazing. Okay, That's how man recognizes that he requires a savior. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that innate brokenness happened at the place of sin, in the first sin, or what we call original sin, mm -hmm. at the fall in the garden, mm -hmm. you know, in Genesis chapter 3. Oh. So man that God created to be premium, mm -hmm. you know, because of that falling away, that you know, at that time, yes. man now needs to make the effort mm -hmm. to retain brokenness. The introduction, mm -hmm. if you like, of salvation is God trying to restore man to himself, himself, to fill that gap or bridge that gap mm -hmm. between when man fell and fell away from him mm -hmm. and um, when man comes back to him. So I've given you two examples or two different kinds of innate brokenness. Number one, one that is universal. Mm -hmm. Actually, both of them are universal. Right. But the first one says God put a part of himself or took a part of us away so that we can always need him. Mm -hmm. You get? Mm -hmm. And then the second one says because man fell, mm -hmm. even the best of us that God put in us Still became is. fractured. Mm -hmm. And the only way to deal with it is to go back into rehabilitation by salvation. By salvation. That's the first kind of brokenness. Mm -hmm. The second kind of brokenness is what I'll call imposed brokenness. Imposed brokenness is a brokenness that happens to someone. Mm -hmm. This kind of brokenness is something that happened to you in the course of life. So someone knows that he innately he's broken. Mm. So he needs a savior. He mm. finds a savior mm. and he's fine. He's able to live his life mm. the way he should live it. Mm. But at some point, maybe a death happened, trauma, mm. maybe a, a heartbreak happens, mm. some emotional disorder, mm. something that imparts upon the emotion and the psyche of the person break someone in Christian knees, we call that soul wounds. Mm. Something fractures something on the inside of a man. Mm. So the man who was innately broken before and was needing God now is shredding to deal with. To deal with. True. Mm. And that is really what the gospel is about. Mm. Because Jesus said that I've come to give life and life more abundantly. Mm. Mm. So it is when we understand, which is why I said when we talk about acknowledgement, but we must understand first and foremost mm. that it is not to us when we find ourselves in the place of brokenness. Mm -hmm. If life does happen, and indeed life happens, you know, you need to recognize that because life happens, brokenness will occur. Mm -hmm. So the idea is not to hide when you find yourself in the place of brokenness. Mm -hmm. I'm got running ahead of myself, but I just want us to know that everyone at some point in their lives would go through what I call imposed brokenness, where it's not your fault. Or something you know, something playing out because mm -hmm. some Something has happened. True. A child who loses his father in the prime of his just getting to know his mm -hmm. father and understanding the place of a father in his life will begin to fill that gap. True. 
Now, the, the trick is if we don't catch this early mm -hmm. and begin to proffer some of these solutions that we're about to proffer through this month mm -hmm. in, you know, looking at the rehab series, mm -hmm. somebody can, that brokenness can send someone off mm -hmm. on something I call a tailspin. Mm -hmm. So because of something that was not his fault, mm -hmm. that fundamentally happened to him, mm -hmm. because nothing is done to close that quickly, mm -hmm. what happens? He begins to go off on a tailspin spring and he begins to find himself in things that are inconvenient mm. which were meant to help him but further break him True. do you understand that True. the third type of brokenness is uh, what i call intentional brokenness i see you know we've looked at what innate brokenness innate. Imposed brokenness. Mm -hmm. And now we're looking at intentional, intentional brokenness. Mm -hmm. Now this is tricky because this is brokenness that is self-inflicted. Wow. But it is for good. I see. <laughs> because not all brokenness leads to bad endings. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? So intentional brokenness says, I have reached a ceiling in myself. Mm -hmm. I feel like there is nothing anymore that I can do. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have done, been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. Mm -hmm. I'm at the prime. I'm the best person in the field. Mm -hmm. When you reach there, if you understand intentional brokenness, what should you do? You should submit yourself to a stretch. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the um, my quotations that has gone really viral and all over the world says that the human spirit is like an elastic band. The more you stretch, stretch it, the more the person becomes. Mm -hmm. So rather than thinking that when you stretch, when you are stretched, you will break and you will not be fixable anymore. Mm -hmm. This intentional brokenness says to you that when you allow yourself to be stretched, mm -hmm. it will bring you to the place where you make headroom so that you can grow and mature mm -hmm. into that. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Yeah. So there are three types of brokenness. That's what I've said. Mm -hmm. Innate brokenness, that brings us to the place where I say, we, by our design, we are not exactly a hundred percent. We're not perfect. Mm -hmm. Jesus even said it. He said, no man mm -hmm. is perfect. Mm -hmm. And then we have imposed mm -hmm. brokenness. That, that, that comes upon us because life, life. happened to us. Mm -hmm. And then we have intentional brokenness, opening ourselves up mm -hmm. to, the, you know, from a place of family that is familiar and safe mm -hmm. to a place of uncertainty because we can tell that there is room at the top for us. Yes, Do you understand very that? Well, Do you well. have questions? Of course. Amazing, <laughs> amazing insights you've shared thus far. I, I want to just take you a little back mm -hmm. to the first. Yes, it's fine. Which is um the innate one. I, and I like the way that you broke it down into two places. Mm -hmm. It makes us see that one man needs God. Mm -hmm. You know, salvation, very important. Mm -hmm. But after a man has even found Christ, mm -hmm. there's still the second leg mm -hmm. from what you explained, mm -hmm. which means that even in Christ, man still needs to constantly pursue after God yes. because there are things that yes. need to be fixed. Oh, definitely. And if I might, I, I might just quickly talk about foxes and fixes and how that you expanded, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of those things there because there are things that need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And this, in a way, I think ties back to this innate yes, yes. Man needs to be connected yes. with stuff. Yes. In his life. Yes. Please, can you share some yes. more light on, on, on this? Okay, so if we would begin to have the foxes and fixes conversation, what it seems simply says is that just because a man is in Christ does not mean that a man is perfect. Mm -hmm. That there are things fundamentally that can impede our progress and our growth in God mm -hmm. that we need to pay attention to mm -hmm. and fix. Things like anger. True. You know, it's not that anger is a bad emotion. Yes, it's it is when it is out of control mm -hmm. that it becomes a bad mm -hmm. emotion. Mm -hmm. Things like fear. Mm -hmm. It's not like fear is a bad emotion, mm -hmm. but when it goes out of control, emotion, yeah. yes, things like doubt. Mm -hmm. You can only doubt if you have believed before. True. True. Do you see True. it? That's the place of imperfection mm -hmm. in man. Mm -hmm. If man were perfect, man would have no need for a savior. I hear. So we are not perfect. Mm -hmm. And because we're not perfect, we need to have these rehab conversations. Because even, you know, uh, pastors, bishops, mm -hmm. from time to time need to ring themselves in True. and say, okay, this is, I've gotten so used to people, you know, you know, when you, you live a life that imparts lives, mm -hmm. People begin to ascribe to you a certain level of power that you actually do not have. Mm. And unless you are someone who 
submits himself to rehab. Because it's not every rehab that they have to check you into a facility. Of course. So you submit yourself to say, okay, I want to do reflective thinking. Mm -hmm. You will find that what was a strength mm -hmm. can quickly degenerate into a brokenness mm -hmm. that can begin to affect mm -hmm. our lives. I'm sure that there's a whole lot more <laughs> that is still to come on this episode. But we need to go on the short break. When we get back, this conversation is going to get even more interesting. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. In a world filled with many fears and discouragement, life often becomes a burden. For those who know the way, life is just simple. Do not worry, you're not alone on this life's journey, as Bidemi McMordy shares powerful insights and principles from her everyday work and life experiences in her book, Nevertheless. Nevertheless is a book designed to encourage and equip you to face life with courage, hope, and determination. Get a copy of Nevertheless and other books written by Bidemi McMordy, like The Wisdom of the Seed, Honor, The Theology of Work, and so much more from a bookstore nearby. Or call 080-905-63555. Or send an email to Bidemi at BidemiMcMordy.com to place your order. I guarantee you, you will make it. Nevertheless. Welcome back. It's still the Nevertheless show with BMM. And my name is still Victor Ogunbe. Just before we went on the break, um, Pastor Bidemi was sharing quite some amazing insights with us. And she was letting us know that, you know, brokenness is something that everybody, you know, needs to pay attention to. It's not necessarily a bad thing all the time based on this explanation. And this makes sense mm -hmm. to me. Uh, that brings me to another question. So when it comes to intentional brokenness, mm -hmm. um, what's category of persons because it really it looks to me like leaders are the focus when it comes to that place mm -hmm. uh, and this choice for leaders anyways yes. you know um so what category of leaders is it just within the church or people oh, in no, the workspace no, 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 no. Uh, for starters nevertheless it's for everyone every kind of leader it's mm -hmm. just that we take our principles from the word of god yes mm -hmm. so when it comes to intentional brokenness um it's yes for leaders but what brings a man to a consciousness of intentional brokenness, to get to the place where he understands that it is time for him to scale up or pivot. Mm -hmm. And because it is time for him, him to pivot, he needs to do the work of even though nobody is. Because sometimes you get to that place that you find yourself all by yourself at the top of the pyramid. You are now at the top of the pyramid. Everybody is looking up to you. Mm -hmm. It has where intentional brokenness is required. You have to counsel yourself. Absolutely. And the only way to counsel yourself mm -hmm. is to come to the place of reflective thinking. Mm -hmm. Reflective thinking is a thinking practice that depending on what intervals you choose, whether at the end of every day, at the end of every week, at the mm -hmm. end of every month, mm -hmm. you actually schedule thinking time. Mm -hmm. You take time, you take your notepad, you sit down and you begin to reflect on how you did through the day, how you did through the week, mm -hmm. your different interactions mm -hmm. and begin to ask yourself uh, fundamental mental questions. questions. How did I do? Mm -hmm. What are the philosophies or the principles that guide my life? So if, for instance, the principle that guides my life is that I'll be considerate. Okay. That, you know, no matter what happens, mm -hmm. as I go through life and I deal with people, mm -hmm. I will be considerate of everyone I come across, mm -hmm. big or small, you know, rich or poor, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So when I sit down to do my reflective th time, mm -hmm. I need to ask myself, okay, today, if I do daily, today I met okay. with four people. Mm -hmm. So um, this first person I met with was Eniola. Mm -hmm. Was I considerate of Eniola today? I see. I see. Okay, so let me just use what had happened today as an example. So mm. one of the crew members came late. Mm. We already had a scheduled time, but he came late. Mm. But what was his excuse? Mm. His excuse or his reason really is that it, it's not that he didn't leave on time, but there is, I actually know that there is something wrong with the stretch, a stretch of the road from where he's coming mm. from. And because of that, it has impacted upon his time to get to to the studio for us to do what we need to do. Yes. Consideration means that even though he has kept me uh, an hour behind time, mm -hmm. because I know that it was really not in his control, 
Consideration is I put myself in his shoes. I and I say to myself, well, yes, he came late. Because of that, um, today's um, pro uh, recordings dragged. But you see, it's not his fault. I'm considerate. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to push my consideration a step further, mm -hmm. when we finish, I should say to him, maybe next time you need to shoot, you need to be uh, move closer to studio because we know that the roads from your side have issues mm -hmm. so that that doesn't have to impact mm -hmm. upon our timing. Do you understand it? So, but in my reflection, I must ask myself, mm -hmm. the way I responded to him when he came, mm -hmm. the way I spoke to him thereafter, mm -hmm. was I considerate of him. Mm -hmm. Why? Because consideration is a pillar of my, of my work, of my transactions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if for any reason, maybe because of the pressure of all the things we need to do, mm -hmm. I did not, I wasn't quite considerate of him mm -hmm. in that conversation. Mm -hmm. Intentional bro brokenness means the next day, because maybe this is in the evening or at night. So the next day, I ought to send him a message and say, look, I actually realized that I was harsh with you oh, when we had this conversation. Oh, I, mm -hmm. I am sorry. I see. see, intentional brokenness means an acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I'm not perfect. Yes. Number two, I need to be more mm -hmm. and I can be better. Mm -hmm. And especially a vulnerability mm -hmm. that I don't need to be the macho man and the superman every yes. time. Yes. You yes. know, I have blind spots. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that this thing that we're talking about or this conversation we're having, mm -hmm. that I made a mistake and it ran away from me. I see. I see. Do you see? I see. When you take a look at it like that, that's not something a lot of leaders do. Leaders don't do that because they've been, we've been fed the lie that when you're vulnerable and people know how, you know, what your weak spots is or the places you struggle at, that they will take advantage. Yes. Does that happen? Yes. True. But I think True. that intentional brokenness makes us better leaders. True. That's what True. I think. Another way to, you know, to be able to understand when you need intentional brokenness is to never forget your previous hurts. Mm. The things that brought you, even if they were imposed brokenness. Yes. Because imposed brokenness have a way when we tend to heal from them or deal mm. with them. Mm. Imposed brokenness have a way of making us what I call calcify. Mm. You know, if you know that when a bone breaks yes. and then, you know, when, when it's healing, depending mm. on how he, it heals, mm. it can calcify. True. And then even though it's functional, yes. it's rough. True. As leaders, calcification, because of the things that happen to us over time, Never. can make us rough around the edges mm -hmm. when we be, when sensitive issues come up and they are being talked about. Do you understand so it? They are the same issue. Exactly. I see. So say for instance, I'm a leader who um because I trust, mm -hmm. I've been taken advantage of oh, okay. by someone for money. Mm -hmm. And people have fleeced me out of money. The, it, it doesn't matter how well mm -hmm. I heal. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, now very sensitive okay. to people asking for yes, money. Yes, true. So, true. you know, it, if I don't take care of it properly mm -hmm. and I don't do the work of discernment and filtering, mm -hmm. the odds are I would lash out at people who are actually just innocent and they're honest people and they're sincere, and they're sincere about, their about their request True. of what it is that they're doing True. with me. But my sensitivity to, because of my previous experience, even though I say I've healed from it, mm. puts me in a place where I'm like this. Yeah, okay. I, I understand this properly because I'm going through a rehab of my own, I see. even in this season, mm. because, and it's relational, mm. because especially in relationships, rehabs get, tend to happen. Mm. And you now find yourself in that place where, because of maybe a series of the way that people have acted with you, that you don't think that you deserve. Mm. And please, I'm not even saying you don't deserve it, or yes. I don't deserve it. Mm. I'm just saying my mind doesn't tell me that I deserve I it. I get it. So because of that, I am sensitive. Mm -hmm. There are people I know, sometimes I look at them and say, well, this person is genuinely, you know, a, a, a value add and mm -hmm. doesn't have an agenda. Mm -hmm. But my mind and my block right mm -hmm. now says everyone has an agenda. So to be able to deal with people, mm -hmm. you know, going forward, I have to stretch 
That's that thing I'm talking about, so, intentional brokenness. Yes. And intentional brokenness in that regard means I may have to open myself and I could be hurt again. Mm -hmm. But I will not shut myself down to relationships that can be empowering mm -hmm. simply because people have not acted the way they were supposed to act in previous yeah, seasons. That's true, true. Do you see? And this makes sense. And I've also seen that, again, as someone who goes through rehab many times, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem. I'm always going to rehab. <laughs> it's fine. But that's because I want to be better. Mm -hmm. As someone who's also gone to re through rehab a couple of times or many times over time, mm -hmm. I've also found that when you do this intentional brokenness and you handle your rehab time properly, mm -hmm. those relationships, even though they break in one season, mm -hmm. can re be interesting produce in the ne another season True. maybe after five seasons in mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and they become empowering again it is the reason why leaders cannot continue to just think oh um, um to use the expression that we use throw away the baby with the bath water mm -hmm. Do, do you understand? I wish that we could, you know, say everything, but again, yeah, we can yeah, we we have to, we still have Okay, time. so so I, I was going to um zoom a little into um, is it inflicted now? Imposed, imposed, imposed. Okay, good. Imposed. Um, um, people, people get to experience life mm -hmm. in many ways. Yes. Uh, um, to to pick the example you used, the example of somebody who has lost a father or a loved one. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that women go through a whole lot mm -hmm. when they lose maybe their a spouse, mm -hmm. and sometimes many of them even find men it, too. Even, even even men mm -hmm. too, you know, and. It becomes difficult to mm -hmm. even now continue. It yes. becomes difficult. Can you can you shed a little light on, you know, on this? Imposed brokenness. What makes imposed brokenness different from the other ones that I've talked about mm -hmm. is that 90% of the time you are the victim. I see. The one to whom it happened to mm -hmm. is the victim in that they did not they didn't sign up for this life true they didn't go to the market and order it mm -hmm. you know but it happened to them it's life that happened to them but you see the key is not to see yourself as the victim not to see yourself as a victim no and that's amazing yes because it happened to you in the dynamics of when it happens to you mm -hmm. the english word for you is victim mm -hmm. so we're talking mm -hmm. about things like rape mm -hmm. We're talking about things like abuse. Mm. You are the victim. You Do you understand it? Understand. You didn't have control over what these people did or what life did. I see. But if you do not recalibrate and flip the script mm. and own what has happened and decide that you want to make a, you know, you want to shift away and from letting it define you, mm. you will find yourself now acting from your mind to your actions as a victim. Wow. So it's not that life doesn't happen. Like a man who loses his job suddenly mm. when he has three children in, in university. It, I, I mean, think about it. In post brokenness, initially he will think, oh, I will soon get over this. It will soon be over. And then he now finds that you know what he thought that, oh, I lost my job in another three months, five months, six months, get another, I'll get another job. That begins to come. stretch. One year, three years, five mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. And the children still need to go to school. Of course. They still call him daddy. Mm -hmm. That can fundamentally affect a man's mm -hmm. psyche. Very true. But when you don't see yourself as the victim, mm -hmm. when you see yourself as okay, you know, if something God said to me um, last year okay. that has become a lifeline in many situations for me. Mm -hmm. He said to me, there are no disappointments, mm -hmm. only new experiences. Yes, yes. That was amazing for me mm -hmm. because you can't, I can't begin to tell you how many things I've experienced between when he told me around July of last year or August of last year and now mm -hmm. that the only thing filter that has helped me keep going it has become my rehab mm -hmm. line of sorts yes. there are no disappointments yes. only yes. new experiences mm -hmm. no disappointments yes. only new experiences mm -hmm. so you can't allow even if someone calls you the victim after a while you need to begin to find a way to get out of that mode true otherwise impose brokenness is it's horrible what happens mm -hmm. when people remain in that place we cannot afford to remain in no, the place of brokenness. of brokenness. If no. there's one takeaway that we are, we, are, we are going to hold on to in this episode is the fact that we cannot afford. And please remember what Pastor B said, that 
there are no no disappointments, no disappointments only, only new experiences. experiences so it doesn't matter what happens to us we are going to hold on to the fact that only new experiences and that new experience god is teaching me something yes. i'm becoming better i'm learning something new sure. Ma, as we leave I, I want you to um i know you said you went ahead of yourself but mm-hmm. i want you to you know zoom in a little on this acknowledgement part even as we leave on this final episode okay so because when we think about it you know how does a man know he's broken mm. The thing about brokenness, when it's unacknowledged, is we become the last people to know that wow. something is wrong with sure. us. Mm-hmm. Because, again, how many of us go on the street and we're asked to describe ourselves and say, I'm a broken person? <laughs> we don't, that's not a tag we like to describe sure. ourselves with. And because that's not a tag we need to describe ourselves with, we need to come to a place. That's why, you know, reflective thinking is one key thing that I want people to go away with in this episode. Mm. That you need to, when you sit down and you do the work of reflection, Mm. you can tell that the way someone did with me six years ago Mm. brought me to the place where I was really broken. Mm. And it doesn't have to make sense to other people. That's the thing about brokenness. Mm. It doesn't have to make sense. There are things that, you know, I have three children. There are things that will happen to my daughter. My daughter has a high threshold for pain. Mm. So when my daughter is ill, she's like me. She keeps going. She Mm. keeps doing the things that she needs to do. Mm. But my older son hates pain. Mm. No threshold. In fact, zero threshold for (laughs) pain. Before something is like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Do you understand this? Now, when... Myself and my daughter are looking at him. I'm wondering, I'm wondering what's wrong with happening? him? <laughs> Why is he losing himself? Mm-hmm. Do you understand yeah. that? But just because it didn't make sense to doesn't us, doesn't mean doesn't mean that it did not happen to him. I follow. Do you understand that? Well. Because our makeups differ. True. And True. because of that, we cannot deny when someone says this is brokenness for me Mm. don't sweep it under the carpet in subsequent episodes we'll look at how to respond to someone in the place of brokenness brokenness. but really reflective thinking is a key always sit down there and take a look at how Mm. you processed and where you got to what was the conclusion you you drew Mm. from the things that happened to you Amazing. Does that make sense? It does make a lot of sense. Right, yeah. Um, thank you so much for for sticking with us. Um, in this first episode, in the subsequent episodes, would um, do well to have further conversations. Thank you for listening. Remember that this is still the Nevertheless Show, a show for organic leaders and leader preneurs. Um, remember what I say to you, that um, God has put a superpower in each of us. And if you embrace your superpower, you live a powerful life. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to Nevertheless. For more information and resources, call 08090563555 or send an email to bidemi at bidemimacmordy.com. Don't forget, discovering your purpose helps you live more powerfully.